Sabina Gold and Silver is located in Vancouver, Canada. I'm joined by the company's uh, CEO as well as President Bruce McLeod. Bruce, great to have you here today. Thanks for having us on. Well, we're here at the Sprott Natural Resources Symposium. So I want to start out by looking at your company, Sabina Gold and Silver. First and foremost, what is your vision as well as mission? Um, our mission statement is to become Canada's next uh, uh, intermediate gold producer. We own 100% of the Back River Gold Belt in Nunavut. Uh, it's an 80 kilometer long uh, belt. Uh, we own 100% of the perspective geology within that. Uh, it's an advanced stage development project. Uh, feasibility was completed and using $1,150 gold. Our total resource today is a little over 5.2 million ounces gold at over 6 grams with an additional 2 million ounces inferred. So not only is it large district scale, but it's also one of the highest grade undeveloped open pits uh, in the world. And Bruce, you're also an engineer, so tell me a little bit about your technical team as well as your management team. Well, my background, I'm third generation in this business. Um, my background is, uh, is operations, construction, development, um, uh, exploration, and have built uh, uh, successful mines in the north, uh, uh, north of 60. Um, and what we've done is uh, 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 built a team that has the core competency and skills to be able to execute and deliver a project like this that is not only large and high grade, but also in a, in a very remote location in Canada. You briefly mentioned your uh, Back River Gold project, but I also want to hear more about your Glencore Hackett River project. Could you tell us a little bit about that? The Hackett River project is something that we used to own. We sold it to Extrata, which in turn was bought by Glencore. Uh, it's a, it's a, a large uh, high-grade zinc silver VMS. Average grade is over 140 grams per ton. And we have a royalty um, on, of 22.5% of the first 190 million ounces of silver that's produced from this property. So plus or minus 40 million ounces attributable to us at no cost, plus 12.5% thereafter. Um, so again, a, a very good option on a long-term uh, silver that, you know, frankly today, um, I, I don't think we're getting value for in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a key word there, which is value. It is a challenging environment right now uh, in your space, but where do you see the opportunities? Well, the opportunity is, is we have an, an asset that is unlike many others. If we take a look at when, when I started with Sabina in 2015, there was six or seven development stage companies that have been through feasibility, permitted or largely permitted. Uh, we've seen three or four of those now taken out by the majors and mid-tiers. So I think we're the largest non-major uh, owned, independently junior uh, owned, uh, a project of this scale at this level of advancement. So it really gives us the optionality of developing it ourselves, continue to explore it, and uh, I think that competitive tension uh, is, uh, is certainly exists from you know, being a takeover candidate. And last but not least, Bruce, before I let you go, we are at a Natural Resources Symposium. So I'm sure you've been speaking to attendees as well as other exhibitors here. What do you think is the sentiment regarding the outlook for precious metals? Well, I think that the sentiment is good. I think there's, there's uh, people are perplexed as to why, uh, uh, when we have so much political uncertainty, um, uh, raising int uh, rising interest rates um, and uh, that we really haven't seen a correlation uh, uh, to an increase increase in, in the price of gold. Um, look, I'm not, a, I'm not a gold bug, I'm a business person. We have a project that makes sense at, a, at $1,150 gold, let alone to where we are today. But I do believe that a lot of these, this, this political uh, uncertainty, uh, the high debt levels, not only by individuals, but by, by first world countries, um, at some point, uh, those will have to uh, be looked at closer. And I think the end result is, is we are uh, entering a phase that um, uh, it, it, it looks like and it feels like that precious metals uh, prices um, are, are bottoming or maybe have bottomed. Okay, Bruce, well, great to get your insights on your company as well as the uh, broader precious metal space. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having us.